the 8th Annual SBCC Scheinfeld Center New Venture Challenge. Friday, April 27th at the SBCC West Campus Fabland Forum. Creative ideas and hardworking students show us all what it means to dream, plan, and profit. College and high school students across Santa Barbara County have tuned their business plans, researched the competition, developed prototypes, found customers, and sharpened their pitches. It's time to find out which innovative ideas will win. Past finalists include Fuelbox founders Robert Herr and Dan Friedman, who turned their new venture pitch into a smash hit at the 2017 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Sylvia Franco Comer is the inspiration behind Casa de Comer Salsa, a winner in the 2017 New Venture Challenge. Sylvia launched her flagship Smokin' Good Salsa brand at legendary local fresh food retailer Tri-County Produce. Support your favorite student entrepreneurs at the Scheinfeld New Venture Challenge Competition. Thank you and welcome. Welcome to the 8th Annual New Venture Challenge. Today, my name is Julie Sampson, by the way. I'm the director of the Scheinfeld Center for Entrepreneur and Entrepreneurship and Innovation here at Santa Barbara City College. Today, I am so happy to say that we have 10 teams who became finalists for this pitch competition based on their business plans, and they're going to present to you today their most persuasive eight-minute pitch of their new business ventures. They're going to be competing head-to-head -head in pursuit of over $15,000 in seed money and scholarships. I would like to tell you that we have teams from SBCC, UC UCSB, and Antioch who have worked long and hard. I'd like all of you to stand up so that we can give you a hand because just the fact that you're here is huge, right? Go ahead and stand up. Well done and congratulations. And, I, and the other part of this is that they would not be here without the mentors, the teachers, the business chairs, the deans. We have a few of those in this room too. Could you stand up? If you have helped any teams or help teams in that capacity, please stand up. Oh, don't be shy. Oh, they're like, they're, they want to be in the background. They want all the focus. Let's give them a huge hand. <laughs> the $15,000 in cash awards and scholarships going to the winners today is generously donated by the Spirit of Entrepreneurship Foundation, Montecito Bank and Trust, Southern California Edison, and Bank of the West. Let's give our sponsors a hand. Additionally, the local workspace Impact Hub has graciously offered to give the, the first place winner today a month membership at their workspace so that they continue to advance with mentorship, events, and a supportive entrepreneurial environment. And we happen to have Diana Pereira here for, as co-founder of Impact Hub as one of our judges. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> The Scheinfeld Center New Venture Challenge is a program of the Scheinfeld Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation here at Santa Barbara City College. We support the development of global entrepreneurs through academics, hands-on learning, and business support. Many of our entrepreneurs go global from the get-go, utilizing global supply chains to make their venture work. Our website, is where you can view more about our success stories, and um, we encourage you to go there, scheinfeld.sbcc.edu. We've been doing uh, this since 2007 through the generous uh, endowment from the late Jim Scheinfeld, who is a prominent entrepreneur and supporter of entrepreneurship at SBCC and within our community. To each and every one of our finalists today, we wish you success, and this event is surely just the beginning of greater things to come. 
while only three teams will place, everyone goes home richer with the spirit of entrepreneurship. So to everyone here, please join me in creating a positive, supportive, distraction-free, competitive environment so that these teams can shine. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Awesome, great, yeah, nice, thank you. So with that, let's get the show on the road. I'd like you to introduce you to our esteemed panel of judges who will determine the first, second, and third place winners today. Their extended bios are in your program, but let me, let me briefly introduce them. We have Kathy O'Dell, who is a serial entrepreneur with over 25 years of leadership experience in high growth enterprises. She is currently president and CEO of Waxing Poetic, and she has been an avid supporter of our program and of students, student entrepreneurs just like you. Let's give Kathy O'Dell a hand. Thank you. I mentioned Diane here, who is a co-founder and visionary for the Impact Hub Santa Barbara, and also founder of Balance Financial Management. Thank you so much for being here, Diana. <laughs> and finally, we have Mike Panessis, who is president of the Central Coast Network and chairman emeritus of the Board of Governors of Tech Coast Angels. That is a mouthful. <laughs> he serves as executive director of the Cal Lutheran Center for Entrepreneurship as well. Thank you, Mike, for being here. Getting uh, either further into the details, each team has eight minutes to pitch their concept. If they go over eight minutes, you can complete your sentence. There's a, the timer is right here. You will be able to see the timer. When you're out of time, you will hear the buzzer. If you're still speaking when the buzzer goes off, you can complete your non-run-on sentence. <laughs> <laughs> And um, then we'll move into the judges' Q&A session. They have two minutes to ask you questions. Um, that's two minutes between the three of them, and so they'll be cooperating with each other to make sure that each of them has a chance in whatever way they want to do that. Um, and then what will happen is the, next, uh, the team that was on stage will exit, the team that's coming up will um, get prepared. I will be positioning your slides for you and handing you the clicker. We will wait till everybody is ready to go, timers, judges, and the presenter, and then we'll start the timer there. Any questions? Okay, well, let's get going then. Without further ado, let me get the first team up. I would like to welcome to the stage Plus Charge from UCSB. <laughs> Hi, my name is Emmett Zeitz, co-founder and CEO of Plus Charge. We came together to combat an ever-growing epidemic in our society, nomophobia. Nomophobia is the fear and anxiety you get when this happens. <laughs> and when this happens, you can't walk home safely, you miss Beyonce headlining at Coachella, <laughs> or you're stuck on a plane listening to that annoying baby crying the whole time because you can't listen to your music. The solution is Plus Charge. Plus Charge is a, a quick, inexpensive, single-use smartphone charger made for millennials on the go. Our product is there for you when you need it, where you need it. Pick up a Plus Charge at your local corner store for only $5. Plug it directly into your phone, fully charge, and you're on your way. Once it's charged, recycle it in your nearest bin. Plus Charge was founded at UCSB Startup Weekend. After pitching our idea and winning investors' choice, we decided to move forward 
and make our working prototype. We took that prototype into the streets of Santa Barbara and the greater Los Angeles area. We then interviewed over 300 customers and when we asked them about our product, we were overwhelmed with their excitement. 83% of millennials said they would use our product. And yes, you read that right. We're already making money. We have 120 units in pre-sales already. In addition, we went out and secured five contracts with local businesses in Santa Barbara. Through all of this market validation, we found our target customer to be millennials on the go, amusement park and festival goers, frequent travelers, and people in emergency situations. We plan on reaching our target customers through targeted, inexpensive social media marketing. Through this marketing, we get to choose who gets to view our ads, and then we only pay when they interact with our ads. So there is a huge market for this. There are over 2 point billion smartphone users in the world. 190 million of them are in the US, and over 65 million of them in the US are within our target market, ages 14 to 25. So how are we gonna reach them? Well, do our comprehensive manufacturing and distribution plan. We plan on manufacturing our product in Shenzhen, China for $1.85. We then will wholesale our product for $3.56 to distributors or venues. So, When you want to buy our product online or in stores, it'll only cost you $4.99. We understand that initially, we have to start small in the local Santa Barbara area. We will also begin with online sales through our website and Amazon. Once we gain enough traction, we believe we'll be able to secure distribution deals with the largest distributors in the US to enter the biggest retailers. Easy Mart, 7-Eleven, Kmart. We believe Plus Charge should be everywhere. In addition, our product has a unique feature. It is fully customizable as to where you can put any logo on the back side of it. With this feature, we plan on targeting events like Coachella and Dodger Stadium where they can put their own logo and then sell it through them. So why is this all possible? It's because we are an innovative and unique product. And we see a clear gap in the $5.5 billion mobile phone charging industry. There's a gap here because the big players, such as power banks and personal outlet chargers are super expensive, bulky, and limit your mobility. They don't wanna enter into the single use market because it'll limit their margin. The little guys are these Chinese importers that don't want you to be able to contact them once their product breaks your phone. We have, we believe that within our first six months, we'll begin production and start selling. Initially, we'll start off with a 10,000 unit order. This will allow us to perfect our product if we need to make any changes. After, during our first three months, we believe, or our six months, we believe we can make, sell over 20,000 units. We'll, we will gain traction through our marketing and during our second half of our first year, we believe we will sell 75,000 units, totaling over $250,000. And during those six months, we believe we will reach our break even point and become a profitable business. By the end of our first year, we will have over $40,000 in the bank. And with all the traction that we've gained, by the second year, Everyone will be looking for a plus charge when their phone dies. We'll be able to sell over 250,000 units that year, totaling nearly $1 million in revenue. At the end of that year, we believe we'll have over $300,000 in the bank to reinvest in our business. Now the only thing that makes all of this possible 
is my team. We are composed of passionate and highly motivated physicists and engineers, all with a technology management background. We are guided by great mentors. Michael Holland has over 40 years in electronics and manufacturing experience, and Kelly Broadbeck is a guru in manufacturing and marketing, and it will help us take our product to the next level. We are a uniquely specialized team, and we are ready to go to market. We are ready for our product to be on shelf. All we need is your investment. We are seeking $75,000 for 10% equity with an additional open line of credit to fund large purchase orders. With this low risk investment, we'll be able to fund our first two production cycles, our overhead costs and our marketing costs. And we'll be able to be a sustainable business following year two. With your help, we can take plus charge everywhere when you need it, where you need it, when you need it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so first of all, a lot of chargers on the market right now have reusable lithium polymer batteries. This is a problem because those are far more expensive than non-reusable. So what we propose to do is take the cheaper non-reusable lithium polymer, put those into our units, and thereby decrease our costs dramatically, which will increase our margins. Discarded? Yeah, so these are truly single use. Uh, they're fully recyclable. So when you're done with your plus charge, simply throw it into the nearest recycling bin. Or if you want to make the city or county's job easier, you can take it apart uh, and put your lithium polymer battery into uh, a battery depository, such as the ones they have at Albertsons or uh, Sprouts, for instance. Okay, and one other question. Um, Actually, that answered my second question. Good. <laughs> uh, cost. Um, you cite a dollar eighty-five as your as your cost. At what volume? So that's at volumes over ten thousand units. Okay, at over ten thousand units. Mm, which we. And and your wholesale price you are saying is three fifty-six with a MSRP of four ninety-nine. Mm. Have you talked to retailers about that? Because that's a very very slim margin for a retailer. Yes, yes we have. As a matter of fact, we've gotten five deals with retailers in the Santa Barbara area, uh, and they were quite happy with the 40% markup that that uh, leaves them with. Um, as a matter of fact, retailers such as SOS Liquors uh, and like DJ's Mini Mart have bought uh, 15 in excess of our units at those margins uh, with that retail price. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Plus Charge. And next, we welcome to the stage Peregrine 8 Travel. Hi, I'm Heather Lucard. I'm here with Peregrine 8. Stress less, travel more. Now, how many people here travel by a show of hands? Everyone, all right. So then you're probably all familiar with that, the plight of the weary traveler, where you find yourself needing to sleep in an awkward or insecure location. Perhaps it's a shared accommodation, such as a hostel where you don't know the people you're staying with, or it's an overnight train or bus where you're cricking your neck against the window trying to sleep, or most likely it's an unexpected airport layover where you find yourself shoved across two of those plastic seats that they really don't want you to sleep on, with your luggage under your head because you're worried someone's gonna steal it. In any of these situations, you're losing sleep due to fear of theft, lack of comfort, or both. Now, in order to validate that this problem was indeed widespread, we talked to about 50 <laughs> travelers in our target market. 
Uh, all of them corroborated our findings and agreed that at some point they find themselves needing to sleep in an awkward or unsecure location. Uh, they almost all worry about the safety of their valuables while they're sleeping and they find it difficult to find a comfortable situation. Usually they use a rolled up sweater, whatever's on hand, or if they use a, an inflatable pillow, travel pillow, they find it awkward or uncomfortable or too small. Our solution to these problems, the falcon line. Now the peregrinate falcon line has unique products combining two travel needs in one, a bag and a pillow, yet are more comfortable and versatile than these traditional alternatives alone. They also add an extra level of security since your valuables are safely stored under your head while you're sleeping, which is when you're most at risk for being pickpocketed. Now our launch product, the Falcon, as demonstrated, is a multifunctional tool, which can be easily and quickly transformed from a carrier bag to a seat pad to a lumbar support roll. As it is washable and water resistant on one side, it can also be used as a ground mat in a pinch for sleeping or even as a baby changing pad. And of course, a neck pillow. And these are just a couple of the, the examples of what we've come up with so far. We want to launch with this, uh, that, with the Falcon first, because it is an affordable, uh, affordable product that has a low barrier of entry. There, the lower price point makes it less likely to be knocked off, and the market is large. Once we've established brand recognition and loyalty with the first product, in year two, we will launch with our flagship product, the Peregrinate Travel Bag. Now, uh, <laughs> we, are we took all the features that the travelers we surveyed liked about their existing luggage, combined them all into one travel bag, and then built the, the value of the, <laughs> of the Falcon right into the bag directly. So, we are calling it the ultimate travel bag, and here's why. Almost all travelers surveyed said that they travel with a roller bag, so it's compatible. They were split against a shoulder bag or a backpack so the product is convertible. It includes a zipper that allows it to expand when you need more space and of course, most importantly, it has the Falcon built right in so you can sleep directly on your bag which adds support and minimizes the risk of pickpocketing. And of course, the pad is removable to serve all of the functions we already mentioned. Of the travelers we surveyed and we showed the prototype to, 90% of them said that they would most likely buy it and the third of them said that they would pay $100 or more. So that helps us find our target market. Economy leisure travelers make up 94% of airline passengers. Within this group, we plan on targeting upper middle class, childless, 25 to 40 year olds, or exennials, who are frequent travelers. I did not make that name up. <laughs> We're also seeing that they tend to, this demographic tends to uh, value experiences over possessions, and they tend to spend more of their budget on travel than other demographics. We're actually also seeing an increase in travel in general. LAX saw a 17% increase last year from the year before of international travelers. The travel bag industry itself is also growing. In 2015, they reported $2.1 trillion spent on travel accessories, which is expected to grow to $2.5 trillion by 2024. Five. They saw 1.4 billion units of travel slash sports bags sold in 2016, and in 2017, the backpack industry itself showed the greatest growth of 5%. Now, all of the travelers we surveyed said that what was important to them was having luggage that was comfortable, added security, was compatible with their existing roller bag, and was convertible to either a backpack or a shoulder bag, and also could be expandable. Our competition, Osprey, Swiss Gear, and Timbuktu, some of the major players in the, in the bag game, and also the travel pillow, the standard foam, satisfy one or two of these needs, but not all of them. The only one that satisfies all of the customer's needs is the Falcon line. For our marketing, we are emulating the marketing plan of several other crowdfunding travel uh, accessory programs such as Turtle, Baobax, and Face Cradle. And we will recoup our startup expenses using improved market viability by launching with our crowdfunding campaigns. We'll be selling exclusively online, so we'll drive customers to these campaigns and subsequently to our website and online store using, uh, and, and also raise our SEO at the same time using targeted social media posts. We will also have our own blog with travel uh, information and tips. 
We will retain these customers and encourage word of mouth by offering discounts on future purchases in exchange for feedback and referrals, and as well as offering commissions to social media tastemakers and affiliate bloggers. The goal is to create a strong brand presence that is synonymous with impeccable customer service, reliable quality products, and global responsibility via our charitable contributions to Kiva, which will attract influencers to champion our brand, and we hope that you'll ask us about that in the Q&A. To start out, we will manufacture here in the USA with Chase Harper and Ventura. We will do fulfillment in-house. Once we outgrow that, we will move overseas to China and, do, and transfer our fulfillment to ShipBob. We are currently working on getting our patent and, we will, and trademarking all of our company logos and uh, proprietary information, and of course, our copyright on all of our materials. So, let's talk money. We predict our cost of goods sold to be $10 for the Falcon and $54 for the travel bag at a selling price of $39.99 and $129.99. That gives us a margin of 60 and 70% respectively. So we, our funding comes from $10,000 that we're investing ourselves, plus $1,000 from our pitch winnings from last semester, plus our crowdfunding revenue, which we expect to be about a minimum of $26,000 at a minimum. Our financial projections confirm that with the predicted crowd, pro, Oh, it's hard to say, crowdfunding sales. And our break-even point being at month two, this recovers our recouping our uh, initial investment, covering monthly operation expenses, manufacturing and fulfilling the pre-orders through our crowdfunding campaign, and having merchandise left over to sell. Net year one, 18,000. I came up with this concept while I was traveling and spent years sleeping in uncomfortable, awkward situations and listening to stories of other people having to do the same thing. We're confident in our product because we have a working prototype and a second one on the way. We have 90% customer validation. We have $11,000 already raised, and we've already got all of the, ne the necessary contractors on board to be able to launch in, within a month. So that's Peregrinate in an eight-minute nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We have now reached our cruising altitude, and I would love to take any questions you might have. So I, I'm interested that, that you're starting out manufacturing in Ventura, um, and you said you know, that you're going to do your own fulfillment, and then you were going to move your fulfillment overseas, but not your manufacturing. Manufacturing overseas. Oh, sorry, I might, oh, did okay. I say it backwards? So manufacturing also overseas. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, manufacturing overseas to China, and fulfillment in Los Angeles with ShipBob. Okay. That makes sense to me <laughs> now. Okay. Yeah, that great. would make less sense the other way. And so, are the shipping. are the cogs you um, you quoted at volume, or are they? At That's at our smaller volume of doing runs of under 500. Okay. Yeah. So that the cogs will actually decrease once we go overseas. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Did you put together um, kind of more detailed financial projections that? Um, might include larger orders. So one of the things about manufacturing is you sometimes have to prepay for the production. Right. And so it's a little more than $10,000 to right. do kind of large scale manufacturing and what your cash needs would be to actually execute um, on a plan. Yes, so for our initial run, uh, based on our predictions for crowdfunding, which we based on other crowdfunded projects and their future success, which we kind of figured out from their Amazon sales, we expect with the sales, if we sell 900 units, the money comes in the month after, so we will have those pre-sales. We'll be able to manufacture with that $35,000, which is 25 from the campaign, plus 10 from our funding, and we'll have 2,000 extra. And we'll be able to manufacture with that and still have product left over to sell going forward. Okay. Does that answer the question? Yes, a little bit. Um, and then you, you went really quickly past your team, so I don't really know who you are, <laughs> what your background 21 is. 21 second timer, yeah. Um, I mean, do you have the expertise um, within your team to execute on this plan, or do you need to kind of build out that team Yeah, more? so we have uh, an operations advisor. We have several advisors on our team, and then we're using outside contractors to build the website and to handle, to help us with fulfillment when we first start out of the home, and uh, also, our, obviously, our dog. <laughs> and um, so we're outside contracting those for now. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and next up, please welcome from Antioch College, Bangladesh Street Kids Aid. founder of Bangladesh Street Kids Aid, which as of last year became an official 501c3 
California nonprofit. Um, I've been skateboarding for 20 years, and I've been teaching skateboarding for 10 years to underprivileged kids in Bangladesh. And I have also learned to speak, read, and write the language. I studied anthropology at a, the second best school in Bangladesh. And now I would like to combine my passion to help these kids and my passion to skateboard to build a skate park and a school in Bangladesh. So I'm not the only one who wants to see this happen. We have George Powell here in Santa Barbara who has been giving us skateboards since 2011. Jersey Mike from Mini Logo has been giving us bearings and wheels since 2014. And Vance has invited us to submit a grant for $20,000 and that was by invite only, so we're very lucky for that, and that will definitely pay for our skate park construction. We have Salt Rag Boards, which is one of our board members. She's the owner of that company. They're down in Venice Beach. Uh, she's a really great supporter and has been giving us tons of equipment every time I go to Bangladesh. Chance the Ride has been giving us helmets and pads. And then on the right side, that's Sohel Ahmed. He's from Bangladesh. He donated land for our school and skate park, which is huge because in Bangladesh, there's 170 million people, and it's about the size of Louisiana in space. So we have 33 million impoverished kids in Bangladesh. And currently, Save the Children and UNICEF are serving about half of those kids with basic services such as education and basic hygiene. And then BSKA, which is Bangladesh Street Kids Aid, and the others are providing more services like housing and whatnot. But what makes us stand out is we're providing skateboarding lessons. And another thing is we will be using sustainable buildings, which we already have a contract with Earthship Biotexture, who makes these buildings, and they'll be raising $20,000 on their website towards this school. And they're totally self-sustaining. They catch their own rainwater. They grow their own food inside. And they run off of solar and wind technology, which in Bangladesh is huge because you lose electricity for about eight hours a day in sweltering, hot, humid conditions sometimes. So no other building actually makes sense. And this is the floor plan he gave us for our school. We have two boy dorms, two girl dorms, and three classrooms, and this one little flower design that they gave us. So we're located in this beautiful area outside of the polluted, overcrowded uh, capital city of Dhaka. And we're strategically located next to an orphanage for 100 girls where they've already agreed to refer girls into our programs and let them come skate at our skate park. Um, we're also 45 minutes away from the international airport, and it's just an awesome setting, and it's complete contrast to what the kids are living in now in the slums on the sh and then in the streets of Dhaka. So this is the documentary posters we have for a short film we've already made that we want to make into a full-length documentary and submit to the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Uh, some people in Bangladesh have done this short film for free already, and uh, it's mostly about the plight of the children, but also about how huge of a potential they have to succeed if given the opportunity. We have about 1,200 followers on Facebook. That's our only other source of marketing, and it's totally free, so we make use of that. We've also got some media attention in Bangladesh, the newspaper and then a documentary that inspired Sohel to give us the land for our project. That aired on the national Bangladeshi television station. Uh, three year goals, 2018, we'd like to build the staff and founder housing using that same flower design, just one building. Earthship will raise 20,000 uh, funds for that and they'll also bring out volunteers and you know build the buildings with the community so that they learn how to build sustainable buildings there. 2019, we'll build the sustainable school and the dormitories for the kids, and then 2020, build the skate park with everybody there on site building it together. So currently, our financial predictions for 2018 is we have friends and family donations of almost 18,000. Our ship will be giving that 20,000. 
Bachao is a Bangladesh American charitable organization which has agreed to give us 10,000 if we submit our business plan to them and then consecutively after that every year $8,000 and the rest, the red, is what we need you guys to give us to make this skate park happen. We have an amazing team. Sohel and Abuddin on the top left are land donors. They're both freedom fighters that fought in the War of Independence for Bangladesh in 1971. Margie Hassel has uh, 30 years of grant writing and nonprofit experience. Aisha Rahman in the middle is our documentary filmmaker. She's one of the only writer directors in Bangladesh. And she's also going to be helping us register with the NGO Bureau in Bangladesh as well. Heidi Lemon is on the board for roller sports, making uh, skateboarding an Olympic sport in 2020. Trent is our accountant and our treasurer. Zahid is our project manager on site. And on the very far right is Jessica Scarf. She's a political science professor, and she'll be helping us secure a global grant from Rotary International. So just to close, we have land, we have tons of skateboards, unlimited supply. We have the support of the skateboard community. We have the contract with the Earthship Biotexture people. And this is really close to becoming a reality and I hope that you guys will select us for your number one prize here for the $5,000 and anyone else who would like to donate can visit us, visit, uh, uh, visit us on Facebook or just come and see me. I got a business card for you. Thank you. Questions? So, so why Bangladesh? I visited there in 2007 with a missionary organization. There are surfers um, that give back to the communities they go and surf in. And I just saw the uh, enormous amount of poverty and kids sleeping in garbage and it was very impactful in my life and I've been wanting to do this for 10 years now. <laughs> and have you, have you thought about where else in the world you could do this? Oh, definitely. So if this is successful, I'd like to do it in Calcutta, India, uh, Nepal. There's street kids everywhere and I visit a lot of areas in South Asia where this would be amazing for them. So. Do you have any ideas as if you raise the money that you need to get the buildings built um, and the, the other housing, you had 2021 where there was a big red section, so everything right. kind of beyond that. So um, it looks like you're going to be um, donation dependent for the future. Do you have any ideas to create maybe some other types of sustainable business models within so that you wouldn't be depending on grants year after year in the future? Definitely. Well, we do... I don't know, we do want to keep it mostly just like a school. We don't want to have to like be, you know, producing anything there. Like there's other schools in Bong or other orphanages that do that kind of thing where they'll make rice paper and make notebooks and sell those. And But I'd l rather just keep it um, a public charity and write grants and even the government in Bangladesh hopefully will sponsor it as well. But, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, hopping on to Diana's question. So it is really a 501c3 that is going to be dependent upon donations. Do you know what your operating budget will be each year to yeah. run? The that hotel? was that last number. That's the last That's number there? 59,000. 59, for each? For 20 kids. For each location. Yeah. So, I mean, if you build, because you said you may want to do this in other places, so. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we are happy to welcome Santa Barbara Party Animals from SBCC. All right. Hi, judges. Have you ever gone to a party where you want to just spend time with family and friends, but you guys ended up spending time with animals that are amazing? Well, that's what Party Animals is about. Party Animals is actually a portable um, zoo, a party zoo, that uh, for children and adults of all ages. And our desire is to provide people with a hands-on experience with animals and to offer fun and options 
for people who want to have a memorable party. As you can see here, there are a lot of kids who have been spending too much time on electronics and they do not spend any time outside. 90, uh, kids spend nine hours a day spending time on electronics and just any device that can drain their brains. Um, so the consequences is for that is obesity, um, also lack of sleep, lack of social skills, and they don't even want to think to go outside. Um, this, uh, there's a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot, well, most people live on, in homes where they do not have any connection with any, um, anything with nature. And this is not only kids' problems. Uh, adults are experiencing more and more stressful world as well. So as you can see, she's about to go bald by pulling out her hair. Uh, ouch. Um, but let's get back to uh, our furry friends here. Uh, we bring the animals and joy to the customers and the environment. And we also, uh, our parties uh, reinforce value of kindness, uh, nurturing, and care for, our, for nature. Uh, animals help people relax and de-stress. As you can see, that oh, that cute guinea pig. Look at that, eating the lettuce <laughs> like a little baby. Um, all right, so who in this room wouldn't feel better after petting one of these cute little furry friends? Look at that. Oh, so adorable, I just want to cuddle it. Um, so our target market uh, is family parties um, and f uh, f festivals, school fairs, uh, corporation events, and hoppy hour. I like that, hoppy. Uh, and also senior, senior homes. Uh, we, we have actually gone to all of these, uh, uh, all of these parties since uh, we started in October. Uh, our marketing covers all of the Santa Barbara County. We can potentially market to 140,000 households in Santa Barbara County, plus also schools and businesses. Uh, our competition, we don't really have, uh, there's not another mobile petting zoo for our, uh, for hire in Santa Barbara uh, area. Uh, our petting zoo specializes only in small animals where people can hold them on their laps and, and also, of course, cuddle them. They're so cute. Our, our petting zoo, um, uh, our petting zoo can adjust into any backyard. We can make this spin big or small. We can just almost in any way. We can also do indoors. Uh, but bless the people who get pooped on. No, just kidding. Uh, we, we never let that happen. <laughs> so our marketing, uh, our marketing so far, our mark, uh, <laughs> sorry has been online, it has been online on Facebook and Instagram. Also, we have had a few referrals. Most of our customers actually found us on Google search, which, technology. Um, since our website launch, we have had a little more than 1,000 hits. Um, our uh, future, future marketing, oh, whoopsies, our future, Marketing, uh, we, we would like to put ourselves on uh, ads in local papers and magazines, and also video advertisement for YouTube and also on our websites. Uh, we would like to meet with event planning companies to sell our party animals, and we would also like to hand out flyers and pamphlets uh, in key of location. Why do I keep doing that? Okay, sorry. I just turned it off. All right. Um, we, uh, our projected, projected, <laughs> I don't like saying that word. Uh, we charge anywhere between two, $250 uh, $100 to $1,500. It all depends on the party size. If the party has more than 100 kids, and also, also depends on the add-ons, we charge extra for the add-ons. We do like carnival games, face painting, and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, here is all the primary lists of our party animals. 
These, uh, this year, we will be spending $8,500 on party animals. Um, the projective uh, profit. Uh, based on our year date to day sales, we are projecting revenue for 2018 to be $9,000 and a profit margin of 7%. We anticipate that we can double our revenue each year in 2019 and 2020. While increasing, our profits uh, margin is 28% in 2019 and 38% in 2020. Okay. If we win, our party animals will spend our, our, on the money of uh, purchasing a trailer to make our, our, our transportation more easier for our animals more efficiently. And we would like to purchase more animals to improve in our party animals. We're planning on getting some chinchillas. Those are cute and fuzzy. <laughs> and um, this is a support team. Uh, me, owner and founder of Party Animals, Amy Swanson, uh, bookkeeping and marketing, and Bill Anderson, owner of Genesis Corporation, also known as my business consultant. Uh, and I have, I have contacted, um, <laughs> contracted animal uh, handlers here. So the way I would love to close is to introduce you back in the scenes, the stars of this Party animals, don't get freaked out with one of them, they do look kind of, um, they got that one, Frankenstein. <laughs> this is why we called it Frankenstein. Uh, he's a Muscovy duck, and we have the three stooges, <laughs> Pinky, Twinkie, and Cupcake, that always makes me hungry when I ever said that. Uh, and we also have rabbits, um, Patch, and Oreo, candy. <laughs> and we also have a bearded, janga, bearded dragon, two bearded dragons, uh, that's Pinto, and the other one is Bean. So <laughs> that's, that's all. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to introduce this to you. Uh, they're cute. Um, are there any regulations in Santa Barbara County that um, govern the handling of animals and how y you know that you you might need to be regulated in any way, shape, or form, or none that you know of. Okay, and um, and so all of these animals, how do you vet them to make certain they're not going to bite somebody or do you, you know well, liability concerns? Well, before I get these animals, I always research for two weeks uh, to see how to handle them, uh, what are their capabilities. <laughs> Because, um, and we also just, um, we, we, we just have people um, in our pens to just keep an eye on them, close eye, so nothing will happen, but we always make sure to research them before we get them into our home. Where, where do you get the animals? Uh, the guinea pigs, we actually save them. Uh, we rescue the guinea pigs at uh, a rescue place. <laughs> Uh, uh, we got them at buns. Uh, the ducks, we actually raised them when they're eggs, so we hatched them. The rabbits, also same thing. We, um, we got them as babies. A friend actually gave them to me. And uh, the bearded dragons, I rescued the bearded dragons from someone who didn't want them or give them any attention. So they're going to get a lot of attention. <laughs> <laughs> so other than funding, what else do you need to be successful? Uh, we need to be successful on pu pu putting our product out more and to, um, to, uh, to put the word out and just um, we go to like car carnivals and just give out flyers and just um, also, oh, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous here. Um, we, we are planning on just, oh, was that the time? Oh, oh, sorry. You can finish your sentence. OK. Um, basically, we are just wanting to just spread out the words. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm lost in mind. But <laughs> that's great. Thank, I am so thank sorry. Thank you, Abel. You're great. Thank great. you. Great.
Okay, next up, we would like to welcome to the stage SB Drones from Santa Barbara City College. Hi, my name is Nathan Naiman, and my company is SB Drones. So let's jump right into this. The first issue that drone services create are that they're very expensive. I've seen some companies out there charge upwards of $1,200 for their services, or they charge prices similar to mine, more on that later, and you don't get much in return from them. This leads people to believe that these services are catered towards people who have a lot of money to spend on these services. The second issue they create are that there are not very many licensed FAA pilots to be able to fly these drones. Um, currently, there are 23,000 licensed pilots in the US, which means only 23,000 people are legally able to fly drones and make money off of them. So we've noticed these issues, and what we want to do is we want to provide a licensed and cost-effective drone service for everyone to take advantage of. The technology is out there and available for people to use, and we want everyone to be able to take advantage of this. Second, we're, I'm personally licensed, which is a rarity in itself. That means that this company can legally go out there and make money with our drone. Now, the drone market itself is a pretty big one. Currently, it's worth two billion US dollars, and that figure is expected to grow 63 times the amount, and by the year 2020, it's expected to be at 127 billion US dollars. The photography and the real estate industries currently hold the highest market percentage at 62% of the market shares. Um, this makes it, this makes these industries the sought after consumers for drone services. Now, the agricultural industry also has a market share in this, but they don't hold as many shares as say photography and real estate do. Now, we've noticed that, and we believe that there's potential for an untapped market in this industry. Thus, we'll begin by selling our services to the wineries located in the Santa Barbara County area. So, let's talk about these wineries for a minute. There are approximately 200 wineries in the Santa Barbara County area, and when we go pitch to these wineries, we'll be talking to their upper level management, more specifically, their marketing department, as when we go out there and take pictures and videos of these properties, we'll be taking photos and videos, like I said, photos and videos, and we'll be essentially doing marketing for them. Now, the people we expect to meet with are gonna be professional, they're gonna be successful, and they're gonna have, they're gonna be experienced. That means that they know what they want for their business, what they expect from us, and how much they are willing to pay for our services. Now, this all sounds great, but it won't be possible without a great marketing campaign. I've done the research, and according to a website called Wine Businesses, uh, wineries primarily use Facebook and Instagram as their social media platforms. Now, we've taken note of that, and we are committed to use, using both of those as our social media platforms. We already have a Facebook page for SB Drones, and I myself have a small following on Instagram that continues to grow daily. Second, we will do warm face-to-face -to -face calls to people who we know want the service in order to get our name out there and to get people talking about what service we can provide for them. So I'm not gonna lie to you too, we have competition, but we are different than our competition. First off, we're cost effective. Like I said before, some services offer similar prices to ours, but we offer more product for your dollar. The second thing that we want to offer is an ease of access when it comes to our pricing. We only have three pricing options to choose from, which will make this an easy choice for any client. And we want to stress how available we are for our clients. I myself am willing to talk to any client day or night about any question, comment, or concern they have about our service. Now, when I said we have three prices to choose from, we have three prices to choose from. The first price being $200 for two hours of our service, the second price being $400 for a half day use of our service, and the last price being $700 for a full day use of our service. Now, I said we're cost effective, and we are. Most companies offer you maybe 15 photos and one three minute video. We've times that by six, and we provide you with 100 photos and five 10 minute videos. And in the end, the pilot, which is me, will essentially handle sales, as I know the market, and I have experience in sales myself. That's great and all, but you might be wondering, how much is this gonna cost? Well, you can hold on to your arms and your legs because it's not gonna cost that much. <laughs> we need $17,000 in order to cover our first year's expenses. 
The major expenses, such as the drone and the computer to store digital assets on, have already been covered. This money will cover our labor costs, costs for our business cards, for gas in order to get to these locations, and it will cover a website, which our clients can use. After those expenses are covered, we plan to break even the second month after launch and make a $45,000 uh, revenue for the first year. And now you might be wondering to yourself too, who's gonna run this? I am, I'm the key person to be able to make this business a success. Why? I'm a licensed pilot. That in itself is a rarity. I know all the FAA rules and regulations needed to be able to fly a drone safely, and I've been flying drones for two years, and I know how to fly it safely, and I know how to get the best out of the drone. I am also an award-winning photographer, which is necessary to be able to take good quality photos and videos with a drone. My visual observer also deserves a shout out too, as she will be there to help us with bigger jobs, and she's trusted by the company, and she um, promotes safety, and she's gonna make sure that everything we do is conducted safely and limits the risk of accident. Now, today, I've talked to you about my company called SB Drones, and the issues we saw, which are we are licensed, and we cut your costs and provide more for your dollar. There's a low cost startup involved with this company, and once those costs are uh, fulfilled, it's all profit from there. And this is a growing industry. You hear on the news all the time about how people are using drones for more of their daily lives, and place companies like Amazon want to start using drones as a way to deliver packages for people. This service is just neat, is something that everyone wants, and is future, it's getting bigger. And we plan on moving with that future too. Thank you. <laughs> you want the clicker? Thanks. Got, he got too excited there. <laughs> I've got two questions. Are you done? Yeah. I'm okay. Um, why did you choose the, the vineyards section and, and, and wineries? And then second, what if you get hit by a bus for your team? <laughs> no, we have legal limits that of like our height we're supposed to fly and how high above the ground we're supposed to fly. And Wineries got picked because I was told by a couple people who work, like do wine tours and stuff, they said that the wineries would love this. They would like this as a way to show off their property and what they provide for people. And after we get the ball rolling, we'd like to also help with our operationals, as in like taking the drone and maybe surveying rows of vineyards for them, something that will cut back on their time and their costs. Okay. So that may answer what my primary question was going to be, is that uh, wineries in particular are fairly static. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the grapes don't change that much. So no. once you photograph it once, what do you do afterward? So you're saying you could, you know, you could create relationships with them to provide other services? Yeah, that's essentially what we want to do. We want to start with them and then grow, do more for them, maybe like, as I said, do surveillance work for them. and. Um, help them with whatever, whatever they need from us, we will be able to provide for them. You might consider photographing weddings that they hold at their facilities too. Yeah, <laughs> eventually we wanna do whatever. <laughs> okay. Let, let's go back to the bus for a second. I'll rephrase it though. What if you get hit by a bus sized drone? <laughs> <laughs> who, Again, who runs the business? Uh, I do. Again, there are rules that I'm supposed to follow as a pilot right. to make sure that there are no collisions. There's a uh, maximum height I'm supposed to have. Um, there's ways, they teach you ways on how to avoid other aircraft to make sure nothing right. like that happens. But what if, if you're unable to fly the drone, who, who runs the company? Ooh, that's a good question. I thought. Well, <laughs> well um, we'd like to eventually get someone else who's trained enough in these services to be able to take over and fly the drone for me if I'm not available. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.
we are actually moving forward to Void um, right now. We'd like to welcome Void from Santa Barbara City College. Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Verhasselt. And here today, I'm representing Void. Void is on a mission to support artists that embody the California culture, which is to create, experience, and enjoy. See, I'm an artist, and as an artist, it's hard to know what to do with all the art that you create, right? There's just so much of it. Often mine just kind of ends up sitting on the shelves collecting dust. Sometimes I'll get some Instagram posts, likes, but that's not really much in return. And there's so many other artists out there just like me that have the exact same problem. So, we try to sell it, but we can't really sell it for that much because if I try to sell you a print, right? and then I go and print another one, you're gonna see it's not limited edition. There's nothing really of value to that. So it's really important that artists are, be able, are able to preserve that value. And that's our solution. Void, artists need a platform to sell their art on limited edition clothing. And Void is a new and innovative way for artists to make money while preserving the value of their art. I'll show you how it works. Once you're accepted into the Void Gallery, we can call it, um, we'll print your artwork on 50 shirts and no more. We always give complete credit to the artist and we promote the artwork throughout our entire branding strategy. So on top of all of this, artists also are granted a website, a, a, an exclusive page on our website where they can, they can have their own gallery to show off their creations and build their reputable brand as an artist in the community. It's a pretty simple process when people submit artwork. All they have to do is take a photo of it and either submit it through our website or our Instagram. Artists only have to pay $5 per submission. Once artists are accepted, or once we approve the artwork, we put it on our website and our community gets to vote on the artwork. Which is pretty cool because it involves all of you in deciding which shirts you want to have next. After that, we print the shirts and sell them directly back to the target market or the community. And the artist can pay only $5 to submit a piece of art and walk out with $450 profit. There's also an incentive structure where artists want to have a higher ranking piece of art because they get 50% profits on the first place, 40 on the second, and 30 on the third place in the monthly drawing. We're producing everything right here in Santa Barbara using a direct-to-garment print method which is amazing because it lets us print to 1,200 dots per inch, which is actually 200 times sharper than the average screen printer, which is completely ideal for printing artwork. On top of all that, we actually have a print by demand strategy, which means we don't have to print any shirts that we don't sell. It cuts overhead costs tremendously. We've already sold over 35 shirts using this strategy, and um, that brought us a total of $545 net profit and 45, we sold 45 shirts to a music festival called Lucidity, which is local here, which brought us another $450 net profit. We've reinvested all of that funding back into the company already. So who are we selling to? It's mainly students. Um, they're 15 to 30 years old, usually make between 10 and 50K, under the age of 30. Um, they like to feel unique, they follow fashion trends, and they love limited edition. When we talk to them, they said what they really want is a high quality shirt with variety in art, diverse styles, and eco-friendly material, and they're willing to pay between $30 to $60 per shirt. Of course, limited edition is important. So we took this feedback, we ordered some diverse styles including crop tops and hoodies. Um, we got about five or ten more artists that are already contributing art until we really get our platform up and running. And uh, we found a supplier that uses 100% eco-friendly organic cotton. Also, it's a great time to enter the fashion industry. Um, currently, it's worth th almost $3 trillion worldwide, and it's growing by 10% every single year. So our marketing strategy, we've got three steps. Step one, we're going to reach out to artists in Santa Barbara. Uh, we've been handing out stickers, and we give 50% off your first order on void.clothing. Also, we're promoting the hashtag so artists know where to go when they want to submit artwork. And we're using this strategy is how we've sold our initial 35 directly to our target market. Next step is to tell the artist's stories, really get in depth about who they are and why what they're doing is important. Um, we want to connect with social media influencers. So 
we can send them designs, send them shirts in return for some publicity. And um, we have brand reps going down to LA with very precise coupon codes that are tailored to them. So we know when they've made sales and they get discounts on our website in return for making sales for us. Step three is to collaborate with major brands. Now, can you guys imagine an O'Neill wetsuit just covered in a gorgeous design? I mean, right now they're all so black and boring. So it would be pretty cool. On top of that, we've got some targeting marketing strategies, uh, mainly focused on Tumblr and Instagram because that's where most of the artist culture is. And we want to let more people know that we exist and we're here. It's an interesting thing to look at our competitive analysis because we have so many different niches here. Really, it's, it's, we're competing with um, limited edition clothing brands mixed with an e-commerce platform and print by demand websites. But none of those services can both have certified limited edition and promote artists while having a print by demand service. Our cost of goods are, oh, these are our financials, but I'm gonna go straight to the numbers for you guys. Um, cost of units sold. Uh, usually costs about $10 to make one. We can sell them for 20 wholesale, but we generally focus on retail, which gives us a $30 gross mar or 66% gross margin. Um, we plan on selling about 2,600 units in the first year, bringing us $28,000 profit. Our break even will be in six months. So far, all of our funding has come from personal investments from the team, but we need more to really push this to the next level. What we have so far is shirts and designs, but what we need is a contract that we can set up between the artists so they know they can't go and just print their art anywhere because that ensures the true limited edition, which is what our consumers are looking for. And what the artists like to know is that they we're not just selling their art over and over again, it's only gonna be printed 50 times. On top of that, we need to license our business. We need a very simple platform for people to go online and vote. So it's not cumbersome, people enjoy it. It's an easy process, just like clicking on a photo on Instagram, you click on your favorite design. And uh, our team behind this, well, I'm the CEO and founder. I'm the creative director as well. I run the kind of the image of the brand. Andrew DeLarge is the nicest and most friendly customer relations rep you've ever met. Sammy has major connections in the fashion industry. His dad imports stuff from China into Brazil all the time, so we have a huge connection there. And Dylan Osgood is our lead salesman. He just sold a bandana that cost us $2 for $45. So I'm very impressed with Dylan's skills there. Uh, this is our legal team. We plan on forming an LLC. They're going to help us obtain a seller's permit and draft a contract for artists. Terry on the end is our mentor. Absolutely amazing man. He also owns the printing equipment here in Santa Barbara. Lastly, why invest in us? Well, we know the target market. I'm an artist. I'm experienced. I know what it's like to have art that you just can't sell. And I have so many friends that are artists that are in the exact same boat. Our service is completely needed. There's no artists out there, or there's so many artists out there that need us and there's nobody doing what we're doing. And lastly, customers absolutely love our products. <laughs> this is Andrew DeLarge, my partner. And Sammy Major. Okay, fashion is a very tricky market. Um, and one of the things about fashion um, is that it succeeds by going viral. And while in printing uh, pieces of artwork, mm -hmm. I can see the limited edition thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you get a really hot design, or if you're dealing with somebody like O'Neill, I don't think that 50 is gonna cut it. Have you thought about that? That's a great point, yeah. So one way to tackle that is whenever we have a design that's really popular and we would like to reproduce it, we can always put it on a different garment. So it's, it's, it's a different run of the same design and the artist would benefit again. As far as the O'Neill things go, we would definitely need to upscale our production just so it actually makes sense for them to make a, an entire wetsuit with that design. Mm -hmm. So our business strategy would change slightly in that aspect, but we would still be using our platform for artists to be able to submit the artwork. How much does one of those printing machines cost? Costs about $50,000. Actually, $30,000 for the printing machine and kind of fifty dollars with all the equipment that's needed. Mm -hmm. um, but there's already so many little stations set up all over the United States that are trying to have like a uh, come in and print your own shirt store. And they use the exact same equipment that we use. So if we can go there and train them on our 
um, quality control, then we can expand all over the United States very easily. And did you, did you have in your financial projections, were, were you including that at some point you're going to have to pay either to use a machine or to buy one? Yes. So far, we're factoring in that we have to pay for the machine that we're using. Um, we're not paying very much because we have a good partnership with our supplier. Right. But ultimately, in the second year, which is not in our initial projections, we will be either paying for a machine or paying other people to print the shirts for us. Yes. Do you need to limit to, you mentioned you were going to start in Santa Barbara, but could you be a little more broad and say this is really social media based and expand to other, other communities of artists? Definitely. Um, ultimately, what I envision is having a New York monthly edition and a California monthly edition. I want to have um, popular musicians take example, uh, ASAP Rocky, he's this rapper. He could go online and say, hey, I want a new design. Let's see what you guys can do. And through Void, all these artists that absolutely love him can submit their artwork, and then he's the one who gets to decide. Mm -hmm. So we want to branch out to a bunch of different little communities and have Void be the hub for publishing limited edition artwork. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Oh, darn. I thought that was mine. <laughs> okay, let's see. Next up, we welcome to the stage Lovely Look from SBCC. Hi, I'm Heather Lee, and I am the founder of Lovely Look, which offers a convenient website for women to find the perfect makeup artist who will give a stress-free, luxurious experience that enhances their appearance and mood right before their special occasion. We do this much better than our closest competitors, Be Glammed and Sephora. Now, the beauty industry is quite large. With a revenue of over $445 billion in just 2017 alone, the beauty service industry profits have increased from 1.9% in 2009 to 5.7% in 2014, and is projected to make over $59 billion in 2019. With only 270,000 businesses in the U.S. and the revenue growth expecting to improve in over the next five years, it seriously has never been a better time to be a beauty entrepreneur. Now our target market are women between the ages of 16 to 40, make an average of $35,000 a year, and need a makeup artist for their special occasion like proms, birthdays, weddings. Through our surveys of over 150 people, we found that clients have problems with the current solution of hiring a makeup artist. They want a more unique experience where they can handpick from a variety of makeup artists who can travel to their location and give them a stress-free, luxurious experience at a variety of prices. As a makeup artist, I found that the problems I face, other makeup artists we surveyed struggled with as well. The main issue came from creating a website and marketing ourselves, which is very time consuming. And we've also all had cancellations occur with no deposits as collateral. And 97% of these makeup artists we spoke to have second jobs uh, because they can't live off of freelancing alone, doing what they love to do. So here's our solution. For our clients and makeup artists, it's lovelylook.com. First, the, makeup, or the clients will go to the makeup artist page. Here, they will be asked to pick their location, their occasion, and the date. Then they click search. Our database will upload the available artists that fit those criteria. The client can then scroll through and click on an account for more information, which looks like this. Here, they can find the makeup artist rates, a description of their experience and expertise, and their portfolio, which you click on any for a closer look. Once they have decided to book the makeup artist, the client simply clicks book now to go through the reservation process. If you would like to hear more about the process behind each appointment, please ask at the end. And as you can see, Lovely Look is the obvious choice when booking a makeup artist for your special occasion. After our first year, we plan to have 
275 makeup artists in Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, and Las Vegas. In our second year, we plan to be expanded into 15 major cities in the US, including more services like photography, massage therapy, maybe even drones. <laughs> Here is how we plan to do this. First, we will crawl and spend our time creating engaging posts and paying for ads on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Then we will walk on, having promotions available on Groupon and on the Santa Barbara Access Card by 2019. And if you would like to know about some of our promotions, uh, we will be offering Please Inquire at the end of the presentation. Uh, we will also be placing ads in the local magazines such as Santa Barbara Weddings and Santa Barbara Lifestyle. As we want run further into marketing and expanding our locations and services, we will be looking to stores like Sephora and Nordstrom, as well as networking through our beauty uh, influencers at conventions like BeautyCon and IMAX. To quickly go over our intellectual property, we are an LLC. We service mark our name and logo, copyright our unique content, like all the photos you see are done by me. Uh, trade secrets, uh, we treat our clientele. And for our independent contracts, uh, we hire our makeup artists so that we can go and limit the costs for uh, payroll taxes, liability, and insurance costs. We also have our makeup artists sign a job description agreement form so they understand what is expected when working through us. <coughs> the clients must electronically sign a liability waiver form when booking their reservation. For insurance, we will need general liability, general business, professional liability, and cyber insurance. If you have any questions about how we handle the insurance with our independent contractors, please ask us at the end. So this is our financials for the first year. To break it down, we take 20% off of every service, averaging about $15 on our slow day, or slow season. Our cost of goods sold is just over $3, leaving us a gross margin of almost 85%. By the end of the first year, our total revenue will be about 250,000. We plan to break, or sorry, <laughs> which costs us about 200,000 giving us a net profit of about 50,000. And we plan to break even in the 11th month or after a little over 9,000 services. And our profit margin is about 20%. So this is the lovely team that will make it happen. Hi, I'm Heather Lee. I have years of experience as a freelance makeup artist and I currently work at Sephora for almost two years. I have Shannon Rogers in right over here. Uh, she's like the yin to my yang. <laughs> she is an amazing personal assistant. And then I have Liz Coussier, who is a social media marketer and in the audience with us today. And we have a financial advisor who's finishing up his financial um, bachelor's. So between myself, my partner, friends, family, the new venture challenge, and demo day, we hope to bring in almost $10,000, which we plan to spend accordingly. Between May and August, we will work on website content, build and design the website with Adam from Void, and turn, or sorry, uh, build and design the app with Morgan, who's a former SBCC entrepreneur, and we will turn our garage space into an office space through Riley, which is another former SBCC entrepreneur, so we can save some money. Totaling at $7,000 needed for just the next four months, which is achievable with your help. The rest of the funds will be directed towards the $15,000 needed to launch in September, which will cover business structure, paperwork, insurance, marketing, travel expenses while we hire our makeup artists, uh, payroll, and website maintenance. Anything that's also needed, we're doing a Kickstarter in August. Thank you.
170 um, consultants on your website. Yes. Um, if there are different few cities, what percentage of that is your of the overall potential market of clients for you? Oh, it's vast. Uh, for potential, there's a large number of makeup artists in Los Angeles, so we took a very minimum. We already have 14 makeup artists in Santa Barbara that's lined up to be um, signed up or independent contractors. Um, and we, our goal is to get 25 every time we go to a new area. And then after that, about a five uh, people increase every month from there. Great. So we really lowballed our numbers. How do you qualify your artists? So we do either in-person or web-based. Uh, we ask them a variety of questions. Um, oh, yeah. Hi, Shannon. <laughs> and um, they do a little demo, so they have to bring their friend or a model. And then also uh, their makeup kit, which will have rules and guidelines on the website that they can read. OK. And how, how do you? Um, protect the business of, you, you know, these makeup artists can go to work for anybody. So that's a good niche of our website. It kind of creates this amazing atmosphere for them. Um, and plus, there's really not, people don't typically go to a makeup artist all the time. They don't necessarily, it's usually special occasions, so kind of like a one-time thing. And uh, we give, um, part of our promotions to our makeup artists getting bonuses if they get a certain amount of services done in a certain amount of time, or um, they get free makeup, they get sponsored, they get sent to uh, beauty conventions as well. Also under the job description agreement form, we have them sign with us. They have a non-compete um, clause and a non-disclosure agreement for all of our clients and then so that they can't go out and market themselves without us. Legal. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We are looking for a pet present from SBCC. Please come up. Hi, uh, everyone and judges. Uh, I was just wondering how many people in here has a dog? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> if you have a dog, you might be familiar with this scenario. <laughs> mm, having a dog takes a lot of effort, playing, walking, feeding, and giving it all the love it needs. And dog owners are just like everyone else. They are busy with work, kids, planning, and running errands. Convenience and time is key. This is our solution. Here we have our first prototype you want to bring with you today. Uh, inside of it, you can find two different treats and two different toys that is delivered every month. <laughs> and um, the dog's health is considered very important to us. That's why we only sell products with high quality uh, that meets the AFCO standards for nutritional adequacy. No hormones and no artificial fillers. Our box is shaped as a dog bone, as you can see. Uh, it comes in two different colors, pink and blue and two different sizes depending on the dog's weight, either uh, under or over 30 pounds. Yes, and this is our, also our shipping uh, container. The industry, uh, we have 70 million dogs in America. And the dog supply industry is growing rapidly due to the popularity of getting a dog and treating it as a royal. Uh, the largest growing segment is products and supplies. Uh, pet supplies is a $69 billion industry today, and it's expected to grow five, uh, uh, even two more billion dollars the next five years. And we're also part of the um, subscription e-commerce uh, industry, which has grown over 100% every single year for the past five years. And our market, uh, our one-year uh, focus will be targeting the Santa Barbara area. As mentioned, there is 70 million dogs in America, and 36% of all households have one, more, uh, one dog or more. That leaves us with 11,000 potential customers the first year in Santa Barbara. Uh, and I've conducted research and surveys uh, saying one out of three uh, are willing to uh, subscribe to our, our products. Now, with so many subscription boxes out there, you might wonder how are we different. 
this is our competitive chart, and as you can see, pet present fulfill all the customer uh, preferences, and our three biggest competitors, they do not. And this is how we are different. We have a colorful dog bone shaped shipping box. Uh, we are giving back to the community we, uh, by giving adoption uh, to the adoption and welfare group in Santa Barbara. We also have a customer community. This is our distribution channel. We are focusing, we are an online retailer uh, and buy directly from the producers. We'll buy from several, such as PetSmart, Ainsworth, and Cargill. Uh, every month we have a new theme to keep up the variety of our customers. Uh, so therefore we need to have several different producers. And the producers ship to Taskback, which is our fulfillment company, and they take care of everything from packaging to sending it to the final consumer. And we'll be doing quality control ourselves, and we're based online, so we'll have a small office rented at the Impact Hub in Santa Barbara. <laughs> and this is our target market. Uh, there are, of course, dog owners, aged 25 to 35, and an annual income between 30 to 80,000. And they live in suburban areas. Uh, they identify as uh, uh, frequent online shoppers. They live an active lifestyle and use social media a lot. Uh, pet present uh, will be sold online through petpresent.com and will be uh, annually attending two trade shows in California. Our target market uses social media a lot, as mentioned, and Instagram and Facebook is the main places we find them. This uh, is the reason why we focus our time and money as a startup on those social medias. We'll also be using the hashtag pet present a lot to encourage our customers to share their photos and spread our word through social medias. And to kickstart uh, our launch, we'll also be having a contest uh, where we give free, free giveaways and we'll be giving away $10 discount codes to the first limited 100 customers. Uh, and one of our differentiators in the market is our brand community. A pet present club is where you collect points uh, and every month you're a customer, you rank up and you can increase your points to use for free months or free gifts. And the community, you can chat with either us or with each other, and referrals also give the customer points. But we are more than that. We also give back to the community. As mentioned, every time we get a new referral, we will also be giving $1 to the Dog Adoption and Welfare Group in Santa Barbara. This is our financial projections. Our cost of goods sold is $21, and we'll be sending, uh, selling our product for 29, which leaves us with a profit margin of $8. And we'll break even in the fifth month at 2,650 units sold. So our first year net income is expected to be 20,956. And I personally invested 10,000 uh, put aside for this business. And our future plans is to manufacture our own products to uh, keep our cogs down. This is our team. <laughs> it's uh, Chico, the product manager, Kira, the quality controller, and me, Dorothy Sin, CEO. I have six years of experience in direct sales with subscription boxes, Woo. and four years in sales management. And I've also been a dog owner for 15 years, and I'm extremely passionate about this. Uh, first of all, we have uh, me with experience from subscription sales from before. Uh, we'll give back to the community as we're social entrepreneurs and who wouldn't want to receive such a kit package every month. Thank you so much. You, uh, you mentioned you're going to retail, your, sell your box for $29 a month. How does that yeah. compare to your competition? It's pretty average or below. The, there are boxes that cost $20 a month, but then you have to subscribe for at least six months. We have no commitments, and there are boxes sold at $30 to $50 every month. Hmm. So you mentioned competitors, BarkBox and Dapper hmm. Dog. Well, yeah. How large companies are they? Hmm? How, how big are they? What kind of a market? Uh, BarkBox has 200,000 monthly subscribers. Interesting. Okay. And how long have they been in business? You know? uh, I think since 2012 or 14, yeah. Okay. Hmm. 
Uh, Kathy asked my question, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I like hearing your passion. Um, Thanks. What would be, I like that you have direct experience um, in this yeah. market. Um, what else, you know, you're, you're kind of a solo entrepreneur at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Who else would you add to your team um, to um, be able to move forward faster? Yeah, definitely, uh, of course, uh, CPA and, uh, and people in uh, um, an advisor. Uh, that would be perfect. And also marketing would really help me further. That's one of my first plans. Great, thank mm. you. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, please welcome to the stage Feel Me Foot Souls from Santa Barbara City College. Mrs. Claria, Mrs. Ignatius, Mrs. Odell. My name is Jake Xander, and this is my brand, Feel Me Foot Souls. Since 1919, Converse has been worn uncomfortably until now. I'll be producing insoles to fit each size of Converse, making them ready to slip in. No hassle better than Dr. Scholl's and Superfeet for young adults ages 17 to 25. So every month, there are 150,000 monthly Google searches for insoles for Converse, and there's still no insole designed to fit into our uncomfortable shoes. So I went out and I surveyed 57 people in my target market, and 100% of them said, they would buy one of our inserts at $17.99. So I came up with, an, with a solution that's an insole made to each size of Converse, making it ready to slip in with no hassle. So we have three layers in, in my insole. And so you have the top layer that protects from your, from your odor protection. You have the middle layer that, protects from your, that supports the shoe and the PU foam. And then you have the bottom two layers that have the stability so that you can walk more comfortably. And so you simply choose which size you are. In my case, I'm a size eight. And you simply slip it into your Converse. And voila, more comfort affordably. And so I went out, I sur I went out and I surveyed 30 people in m to try my prototype. And 27 th of them found my insoles, made their Converse more comfortable. The other three said they want a little bit more toe room. So in my next prototype, I'm accounting for that. And my manufacturing, I have an industry expert named Sophia Hokovist who is working on this idea currently in Sweden, but recently stopped due to her full-time job as an orthopedic technician, and she also just had a baby. <laughs> and she still loves this idea and wants to see it prosper, so she has given me all of her customer feedback, her demographic profiles, where she is manufacturing, and advice on where she believes I should manufacture my insoles. And so we are gonna have 12 sizes, that is $400 a mold for the setup costs. And on May 15th, I'll be leaving to Vietnam to look at five potential factories to produce my insoles. I'd love to tell you more about my relationship with Sophia at the, in the questions and answers after. And so look, right now, it's a great time to enter the market. In 2020, it's gonna hit 3.5 billion. And what's also important is that Converse is growing in popularity, and Converse sells 270,000 pairs of shoes daily. And so I went, went out and I asked my target market what was important to them, and they're, if for an insole for Converse. And so they said they wanted it to fit into Converse, they could pick according to their shoe size, that it would provide arch support and would provide cushioning. And so, to perfect our concept, we will be trademarking our name, Filming Foot Soles, which is not being used anywhere else. We are going to acquire a design patent to protect our insole. We will also be copywriting how our insoles look and we will handle our product liability by, we have started an LLC, we will have product liability insurance and we will include a warning label on our packaging. And so our sales goal for our first year is to generate 67,195 net profit. We're gonna execute this by converting half of those Google searches, which is super conservative. And to do this, we will need 4693 customers who will buy two insoles per year. So far, we already have 58 customers who wanna buy already, along with a chiropractor who wants some first chiropractor clinic. So let me give you a little look into my customer's life. So my customer, they love to travel, adventure, explore, feel their souls. And their demographic is Generation Z, ages 17 to 23, who are male and female. They have a small amount of money. And their psychographic is people who are highly impacted by social media. And they enjoy traveling and experiencing life. And they stress diversity and individuality. So in order to reach my customers, I'm going to have three stages of marketing. In my initial crawl stage, I'm going to sell it to the 57 customers I've acquired and the chiropractor clinic. And I'm going to retain these customers by following up week after the customers have purchased from seeing what we can do better. Once we have received customer feedback, we'll be ready to move on to our walk stage, where we will engage our customers by starting a Show Us Your Soul Instagram campaign, 
where our followers will take pictures of their Converse, tagging us for a chance to win a pair of insoles. We're gonna sell to our followers through our Instagram, showing how this is a cool insole that will provide more comfort for their shoes. And retain these followers by constantly holding different promotions and contests with influencers. So I myself am an Instagram marketing professional, and I actually have seen increases of 67% in the products I sell on there already, so you can ask, ask me about that more in the questions and the answers after. In our last stage, we're gonna attract big box retailers, such as showing them how our sales are from online and also from the stores we have. And then we're gonna be selling to big box retailers, such as Urban Outfitters and Tilly's, who I've also established a connection in lead to in the past couple weeks. And lastly, this will set us up for the possibility for commerce to acquire the only foot soles. So since the last demo day in, October, in December, I've accomplished acquiring my LOC business license, opening a Feel Me Foot Souls bank account, book my flight to Vietnam to look at factories, design my logo, design my packaging, and also purchase multiple domains for my company. And so here's my spreadsheet for the year, and let me break that down for you. So our whole sale price is $6.99 with a 48% profit margin for us. Our retail price is $17.99 with a profit margin of 80% for us. Our net profit for the year is 65,595. And the sources of our funding will be fr come from my personal savings, the winnings from today, and a potential angel investor. The uses of my funding from month one will go towards my marketing, cost of goods sold, molds for my insoles, my storage rental, and my web building my website and any unforeseen costs. And also the winnings from today that I win, I'll be going towards getting my product inventory. <laughs> and also I'm looking for a loan from an angel investor for 30,000 with a return of up to 20% interest. My exit strategy will be to sell this brand to Converse. So right now, Converse is owned by Nike, which shows that Nike has buying history. And previously, Converse already has interest in this idea because my mentor, Sophia, had her insoles in one Converse retail store. So look at me, here's my team. Myself, Jake Xander, I'm good at marketing, business development, and I'm also an entrepreneur. My graphic designer, Jillian. My accountant, Kobe Harmon. My business mentor, Todd Weinberg my attorney and my dad, Eric Zander. Why should I win? I have an industry expert who is an orthopedic technician who has given me everything to help this business be successful. I'm an industry expert in Instagram marketing and I will be using the same strategies for my brand, Filming Foot Souls, that I have used previously on another product. People will also want to buy our merchandise with the Feel Your Soul on it, and this is an idea that has a normal potential to one day be acquired by Converse, which is actually owned by Nike. And so don't just feel your insole, feel your soul. This design right here is not the, this is the prototype design. The design we're gonna have is gonna say, feel your soul, and it's gonna be white and black. Can these uh, insoles work in other shoes, or it's only specific to Converse? So, the thing that's so great about them is they're only for Converse. And so, when you're thinking about getting an insole for Converse, like Dr. Scholl's don't even fit in them. And so, it's simply say, you're a size eight, you need a size eight insole, you know exactly it's gonna work for Converse. And so you have, in the buyer's mind, you know that it's gonna work. So this seems like an idea that would be ripe for crowdfunding. Um, have you explored that and why have you, so, was that not listed? Or So the crowdfunding thing, I'm, I'm almost to the point where I don't need crowdfunding because I think that if I put on crowdfunding, there could be the potential where you can't protect the IP from it. And so it's almost as if someone could om who has better and faster distribution than I am can be like, I'm gonna first get this out before they, they do. And so that's my kind of worry with that, which I've been, <laughs> Great. You 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 um you mentioned that the molds cost four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars each, each per mold. Yes. What 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 kind of what kind of material are you? So it's actually molding? a stamp, and so it stamps it, and so each size costs four hundred dollars. These are actually real numbers from the factory okay. that Sophia was using, and so this is how I know all this information. Okay. And, and and how many units can each mold produce before it's so that's okay. a question I'm still figuring out when I, that's the question of why I'm going to Vietnam for. Okay. The initial run for the minimum order quantity for your first order is 5,000. And so that's my initial run for the first order. And then after that, that was a, that's what I'm gonna be. 5,000 per, per size? No, or just, just 5,000 5, total. 5,000 total. Okay. Per but, size would be a little too much. And, <laughs> and, and, and so in your first runs, you're gonna have to select what the most popular selling sizes are or something, because so you're not gonna actually, build all those sizes. I'm gonna have 12 sizes, oh. and the most popular, so it's gonna be start men's starting from six to 12, and women's that is four to eight, 
And so including half sizes in between, and so that makes 12 sizes in general, and that's basically the really popular sizes that we need to have. Okay, and how big is Con versus uh, uh, Market? I'm, you may have said, and I just didn't write it down. The, uh, they sell. How, how many much shoes? Converse sell for? Yeah, how, no, how many do they sell a year? Oh, two, uh, how many a year? How many Converse, yeah. It's um, 270,000 a day, so if we okay, multiply that by 365. <laughs> okay, okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, big round of applause to all finalists, right? Entrepreneurship is about showing up, right? And you all did a great job of that today. Uh, so, with that being said, the judges have determined uh, their top three picks. I'm not sure who they are. I don't know yet either, so I'll be learning along with you. Uh, the way that this is going to go is third place will be announced first, then second, then first. When the judges announce your name, your team can come up to the stage here. I have an envelope, and this doesn't contain your money, sorry. <laughs> it contains a form that you need to fill out in order to get your money, and it's really important for you to return this to us today before you leave so that next week, when we are doing fine dining at the, what do we call it now? It's the Santa Barbara Beachfront Resort of Hilton. Um, yeah, that's where you're gonna receive your um, award. You'll get the check there. And you'll be doing a uh, 30 second thank you um, at the stage, so just to give you a heads up, the winners will be doing that. Everybody will be joined, all finalists, are invited to join us at the Startup Showcase before that dinner. And there are gonna be hundreds of entrepreneurs there. There might just be investor types there. And so you have the opportunity to showcase your products and services and connect with the other uh, entrepreneurs that are being honored there. And everybody gets that opportunity. And then the winners are the ones that go on to, uh, to the dinner right afterwards, okay? You got all the details about that, though you probably didn't, don't know that you did in the packet that you got when you checked in, <laughs> right? <laughs> but now, after all the um, excitement um, settles down, you might wanna take a look at that because it has all the information. Also, I'm really excited to share with you that Diana um, said that she would like to offer a month membership to all of the winners here today. So thank you so much. That's a great opportunity. Without further ado, though, let's get to the business here. So judges, do you want to start off with, with uh, uh, the third place? I, yes. Okay. And I'm, I'm trying really hard, since we've got three, not to do a Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so our, our third place winner, um, one of the hardest things to do with a startup is to make something that's truly unique, that uh, is difficult to copy, and that gives you a barrier to entry by other competitors. And uh, we, thought that, we thought that this entrant did a really good job with that by harnessing creatives, uh, by giving them an opportunity to, uh, to share their artwork uh, and to, um, to uh, no, don't clap yet. I'm building up. There's still drama. You don't know who it is yet, right? <laughs> to, to critique each other's work, to choose the best. Uh, our, our one issue is we think 50 is probably a little too limited edition, 500 or even 5,000 as you get big and successful. Uh, third place winner is Void. <laughs> So exciting. Okay, congratulations, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, judges, second place. Second place. Super excited about this one. So I recently just went to the big co-working conference in New York City, and uh, I thought I would take a red eye so that I was ready to go there in the morning. And I had my little foam thing. It was terrible. It was bulky. And I'm watching this great product that is clever, unique. It's a huge market. Thinking, I wish I had one of those that would fit a little bit better in my luggage. Um, the, the team had great presentation skills, good working prototype. We felt like we knew exactly what the, what the product was, how it could be marketed, and a lot of um, growth potential. So happy to announce Peregrine as the second place. <laughs> You should put your designs on their stuff. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> Collaborate. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Okay, fabulous. And I don't know, do we need a drum roll for this? Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna announce the first place winner, but I do want to reiterate what Julie said is you've all winners, you all did a really good job. And uh, entrepreneurship is not only about showing up, it's about sticking to it. Yes. The idea that you're an overnight success just isn't true. <laughs> so <laughs> we want to tell you that <laughs> stick to it. You've got good plans. You know, make it, make it work. OK, so our winner we chose because going after a big market, a well-documented need, um, while the pitch described primarily an online entry. We think that there are many, many points of entry for this product. Um, we like the cost structure. We think that, um, that there's a really good understanding of how the money's gonna be made here. And like the fact that um, pretty far along on the design and the possibility. So our winner is Feel Me Foot Souls. <laughs> Wonderful. Congratulations to all of you. Yeah. So I think we've reached the end of our event today. But let's give a hand um, before we break. Look, this only happened with these wonderful judges that we have um, that were able to listen to all the ideas, give their best expertise. And this was just out of their love of supporting entrepreneurship and all of you and what you brought here. So let's give our judges a huge hand. Up. Nice job, everyone. Thank you. Excellent.